Welcome back to the Bookends YouTube channel. I'm James McGowan. I'm Jessica Fast. And our topic today is those top things that might be sinking your query. So we are talking to the querying writers out there or soon to be querying writers. Yes. I noticed that every video we say we have the same beginning. So today we're talking about, and I'm trying to change that up. <laughs> and we've done a ton on queries. But we this have. is yet a different take. Yeah, and that's pretty much what querying is. It's all the same advice, just framed in a different way. Um, so these I've are. Learned, I've learned. I'm sorry, I no. cut you off, but I've learned that sometimes, well, we all learn differently, and we all absorb information differently. And so, while some of this may feel a little bit repetitive, the truth is, we're coming at it from different directions, and what you might grasp out of something. It might be a different video that somebody else has that aha moment with. So. Exactly, that's what we're seeking here, those aha moments for any writer. And also, you know, the, we posted things a while ago and we're refreshing that content. Um, <laughs> anyway, that's our justification for doing another querying video. <laughs> now that's for sure. the actual querying video. <laughs> um, yeah, so we've got a list of things that, um, or maybe even structures and strategies for writing a query that could actually be hurting your query. Um, the first one is that you are describing your book, but you are not describing any of the action. <laughs> and a lot of people do it because we are very close to our books. We yeah. know the ins and outs. We can probably recite passages of them at the same, at any given point. But um, are we focusing on what's going to hook a reader? And not, that's not always the case when you're writing a query letter because you get confused by what gets included there. Do you have an example of what would not work? Putting you on the spot. You are putting on the spot. Luckily, I can just crop out the weight. <laughs> I mean, I think it's something along the lines of this is a book about a boy who meets a girl yes. in a bookstore and they fall in love. And it's different from any other story because they have cats and not a dog. There's no real, there's no real action. There's nothing that really sets that book apart. Many books are about a boy who meets a girl who falls in love. Many books right. do that. Right. But what is your book? What is happening in your book? The specifics of what, um, like the rising action, the climax, the, the possible solution. Hint at all that stuff. Well, don't hint. Tell me all that stuff. It's really, it's really telling, not showing. We yes. want your query letter to show us what the story is. Yeah, and you have to be able to um, pull out, I mean, you can read the back of any book and it will give you sort of an indication of that persuasive writing that's telling me you want to read this book in all its coded language. You are putting it in my head that I need to know what happens. I need to read this book. Um, yep. And a lot of queers might miss that mark. Um, another thing is, and this one drives me bonkers, especially working in kid lit. Oh, this one drives me nuts you are telling us the themes or the lessons that a reader might take away from this book. Like this is a book about what it means to be, okay, confession here, any review that tells me what it means to be intrinsically human drives me crazy. <laughs> it's like every literary fiction book is about what it means to be intrinsically human. Um, but tell me, I wanna know what your book is. I don't wanna know that it's a book about what it means to be intrinsically human or a book that will um, teach readers how to, be more open or anything like that. That's not what I'm looking for. No, I mean, it's your book, your query letter is ad copy for your book. Yeah. And you know, if somebody said to you, well, if you said to somebody, oh, hey, what was Jurassic Park about? Well, it was really about what it means to be intrinsically <laughs> human. It explores themes of class and, and, and like all of that stuff because- the and, and, and how important writing, animals are to the ecosystem. What right. is that? But, but the truth is if you are writing persuasive copy for your book, that's going to inform me of the themes. You don't have to explicitly tell me because if yeah. you're writing a book about a young girl who comes from poverty, I will know that it's a book about class. I will know that it's a book that tackles issue about- um, poverty and, and all of those, all of the things that go along with that. So yeah, you, you can show me that right. in your action. Right. And, and a book for a picture book specifically, if it's about teaching a kid to respect others, if your hook is, we don't eat our classmates by Ryan T. Higgins, for example, I will know it's about teaching respect. You don't bite, you don't hurt others. You don't, <laughs> you, like, I will know that that's what the book is trying to teach a reader. So don't focus on that. Focus on what is happening in your book. What is making me turn and, this? And, and as an adult reader, 
you know, reading adult fiction, I don't read a book because I want to learn how to be a better human. Right. You know, I mean, every bit of fiction I read does and should teach me something about, you know, other cultures, other countries, you know, other people, other ideas. But I don't want to be told that's what the book is going to do. Nobody's picking up a book, unless it's nonfiction, nobody's really picking up a book to um, learn and educate. We're picking up a book primarily, and you might, like, that's obviously a byproduct of any book you read, but you are picking up a book to be entertained. Yeah. And that's what we're looking for in a query letter, hooking me yeah. so that I know I'm in for an entertaining read and I want to read the whole thing. Exactly. Um, so this is kind of the, the other side of the coin, but getting caught up in too many details. Um, a good one, a good example of that is, it's actually another point on our list, but I'm going to put it in here. Proper nouns. Telling me the names of every character in the book. Yeah. The, all the little world building that you might have, any bit of backstory, all of that stuff that just kind of weighs down your query. Um, that is not good. <laughs> yeah. And it's also, like we tend not to need character descriptions in a query. And I will tell you what will sink a query for me immediately. Two words buxom blonde. If you put that in your query, it's going to be an instant rejection. <laughs> there you have other it. similar There's words. <laughs> and other well, similar words. <laughs> but, and, and what those details are doing are taking me out of your story, which the same thing that the lessons or themes are doing. They're never putting me in your story, but this is taking me out of them. I'm getting... Um, like a little tornado of details in my brain. I can't keep track of it. I don't exactly know what's going on. You really run the risk of losing me and my interest, which is yeah. the exact opposite of what you want. Um, so keeping it down to a very under, like you've read the book, but maybe somebody else hasn't and can help you say, well, I don't know what this means. Does it have to be in there? Right. So we find that sharing queries of pitch letters with other people at bookends who have never read the book gets the best feedback for us because we get to pair back the things that aren't necessary. Yeah, because our goal is to try to get everybody at bookends to say, oh my God, I want to read this. Read and if they're not, then right. we have to fix our pitch. If I don't get a, this sounds great, then I did not do my job right. and I should not send that pitch out. Right. Um, so another, <laughs> another thing that might be sinking your query is that you are including too much personal information. Yeah. Let me put a caveat first before we talk about that, that if you are writing nonfiction, it's the opposite. You're not including enough about your platform. Um, but in a fiction query, you could really weigh it down with your personal details and your entire career trajectory and where you were born and all that stuff. And that's not what we're looking for. No, I think that if you're a published writer, definitely feel free to say that right up front. You know, I'm a published writer of five books with Viking. Fine, that's great up front. The details can go towards the bottom. If you're not, frankly, I don't give a shit who you are. I just wanna know about your book. I wanna know a little bit about you later, but the most important thing for me is, what's your book? And again, if I said to you, oh, I have this great book, After Elias by Eddie Budel Tan, and you say, what's it about? And I start telling you all about Eddie, you're like, what? Right. And that's not to say that you shouldn't have a bio section. You absolutely should. It could be at the end of your query letter and it should not be your entire life story. You're not writing a memoir here. It can be where you're from, what you do for a living, any writing experience, maybe something that helped inform you writing this book or informs your writing in general. And we've then definitely it. done other videos on bio yeah. and query letters that will help you out there too. Right. So take a look at those, but be very careful of how much you're sharing and that it doesn't take over your query because it never should. Um, and just to say a query is a cover letter for your book. So it should primarily be about your book. Yeah. I mean, what you're trying to do is get us to read your book, not date you. <laughs> yeah. This is not a Tinder <laughs> profile. <laughs> <laughs> um, so this is actually one that comes from Jessica and it's a great point I hadn't thought of, but that the tone of your query might not fit your genre. Yeah, and that drives me crazy that if you're going to tell me your book is domestic suspense, I'm imagining dark as they tend to be. And if your query is super funny, then it may immediately makes me think that you aren't understanding the genre. 
you know, I mean, don't get me wrong. You can have a funny quip or a little intro or, you know, something like that. But what I'm talking about is the blurb of your book needs right. to match the tone. I mean, the, the clear of that to make it like super clear is if you're writing a rom-com and it's dry and very oh. serious, it's not going to give me the right sense of your book. Yeah. When I'm reading your blurb, I want a sense of the tone of the book and it should match the tone of the genre. I want the rom and I want the com. <laughs> That's what you got to do. You have to deliver on that. I want, when you're writing a picture of a query, I want a sense of your voice, the, the whimsy and the playfulness or alternatively the lyricism that you might bring to a picture book. I want a sense of that. And also, actually, this might not quite go into the tone, but I think this is something that is super important. Um, if you're an asshole in your query, I'm going to reject you immediately. If it's you tell easy. me I'm going to reject you, if you start your query with, you're probably not going to read this anyway, or you're probably going to reject this anyway. You gave me my I am. Thank you. Thank you for letting me do that. Another thing, just like way too much ego never works for me. Like this is the book that's going to change picture books or change science fiction forever. And this and is- And no blurb. That's all they send you. Right. And don't insult the work that I'm doing in that genre and the work that my colleagues are doing in that genre. Don't say that all romance books are crap and then try and pitch me your romance book. Because, yes. like, okay, you've insulted every one of my clients. Yes, I have, I have read a lot of romance and realized I need to write my own because everything's crap. Right, right. And we get that a lot. I'm sure romance uh, agents get it a ton, but we get it a lot in picture books. Like, this has never been written before for a child. And I'm like, no, I can name you about 15 <laughs> titles that have done the same thing. Um, so just being, you know, conscious that there is a budding marketplace outside of the book you've written and don't, don't offend it. Well, the truth is what it shows to me is you have a lack of knowledge of the market. Right. And <laughs> you, you can't write a book into a genre that you don't understand or respect. Yeah, exactly. As simple as that. Yep. Understand and respect. Put that on a pillow. <laughs> anyway, um, and this is probably the be all end all of this list, but that you are not meeting the basic guidelines of a query letter. Yeah, um, so you can definitely check our other videos for more details on this. We're going to talk about it now, but yeah. So I always quote Eric Smith. I don't know if he got it from someone else, but he says all the time, the hook, the book, the cook. And I like that. It's, it's great. I use it all the time. You can never forget it. Um, but you should have the book details, your word count, um, the market, um, the intended audience, excuse me, um, the title, all, the genre, all that information in your first paragraph. Then it's your book, the query letter, the blurb, the two, par two to three paragraphs, and then your quick bio about you. If you are missing those things, you are not giving me a full representation of you and your, your book. Yeah, or if you're way off the mark. You know, and we've done videos and blog posts on word count. But if your word count isn't within the accepted word count guidelines, then to me, it's a real red flag that you aren't ready, you haven't done the work. And, you know, and for a lot of agents who are getting, you know, three to 500 queries a month, we don't have time to really mess around with stuff. If you're writing 200,000 words, it's just an easy rejection. If you're writing 30,000 words for a novel, it's an easy rejection. And this goes back to understanding and respecting the genre, knowing that you are doing justice for a book in that space and that you're doing it right. So. Yep. Yep. Well, we hope that these little warning signs were helpful when you're crafting your query. Don't hesitate to reference back to this video after you've written yours to give yourself a little checklist. Um, but if you have any others that you think might be helpful for your fellow queriers, don't hesitate to put them in the comments. Um, we hope to see you back next time. Bye.